Thank you for tuning in to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, where we talk the latest news, rumors, and games of the week of the National Football League, from the latest signings to this year's breakout rookie, and all of the news in between. As always, I'm Jeremiah. And I'm Alex. And thanks for coming back. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Um, was to start things off, we got to talk about Larry Tunzel. He was the big story on draft day and after draft day, and he's still the big story right now. So yeah. What were your thoughts of, uh, you know, the what happened? Yeah, um, that's an unfortunate thing to happen, man. That's um, I don't blame the guy. Like, it's it sucks. Like that happening to you the day before probably the biggest day of your life um and you know people say well you shouldn't have done it in the first place well, he's a young kid you know people make mistakes so i feel bad for the guy i mean at the end of the day he still got drafted to play in the nfl and he can make millions of dollars and he ended up going 13 so it's not like he drew, you know went undrafted like um what was his name from a couple of years ago that went to the cowboys um that old lineman i'll forget i'll look it up but um you know that that's it's unfortunate is what happened what about you all right, before I have my insight, I just want to let you guys know what the story is in case you've been living under a rock. And if you watch football, and if you know anything about football and listen to this podcast, then you should know what's going on. But in case you don't know, I'm going to let you on. The f- I'm going to let you know the info. Okay. The, there's a video of Laramie Tunsil smoking a bong with a gas mask. It was posted on his Twitter account 13 minutes before the draft. And if that wasn't enough, on his Instagram account, there's also a screenshot of what was it of a conversation between conversation? himself and a assistant coach or athletic, uh, you know, trainer or something like that. Yeah, regarding yeah, it was money for uh, his mother's utility bill that was a hundred mm-hmm. that no three hundred and five dollars. Um, and real quick, the um, lineman I was speaking of is La La L Collins, Lael L Collins, Lael L Collins, yes, or okay. his name, Lael L Collins. That, yeah, that rings a bell. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, he went in the supplemental draft. So yeah, I, the fact that he dropped all the way from three to ten, he lost a lot of money, and the difference between being drafted at number three and number thirteen is twelve point eleven million dollars in salary and eight point seven seven millions in signing bonus. According to Man. yeah, it, this is according to an NFL chart. From the 2015 draftees, I think. Yeah, I think I think it was, it was an NFL chart. That's tricky, man. That's I mean, that's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, yeah, he's probably gonna make money still. You know, he's still gonna get a oh, million still, something plus contract. Money. But it's definitely unfortunate. I feel bad for the guy. That's something you don't want to ever see happen. You know, he was probably gonna go as early as number three, six, three or six. You know, who knows what the charges are gonna do, but. We know for sure. Apparently, it came out that uh, he was going to be the guy that the Ravens were going to go look at. So uh, we know he at least dropped nine, nope, six. He, you know, he still dropped a good amount, you know, picks wise. You know, he was young when it happened. It was confirmed that it was two years ago. I think when he was. It looks like he's still in high school. Yeah, I think it, I think he was a freshman at Ole Miss. Um. I think we were a little bit split on that, but either yeah. way, it was. It I was don't two know how old he was. Yeah, either. yeah, but um, it was two years ago. Mm-hmm. I mean, either way, it's it's still enough to drop him. Seven yeah, no, picks no, I draft, yeah, you know? I understand why he got dropped, but the fact that I I do feel bad for him too because he was a young guy making a mistake, you know, and it the fact that I felt bad for him because it was hacked on his Twitter account. Yeah, He's, I I believe him. It, it was hacked. I can tell by his uh. His reaction. His reaction to it there in the press conference and all that. Yeah, yeah I feel I feel very bad. Yeah, it's a shame because this he was a top five player. Honestly, he was arguably the top prospect in the draft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, he definitely you know he, he went to a g- I, th- I still think he went to a good situation. I think he ended up going to a team that's gonna he's probably gonna start. He's probably gonna play well, and uh, hopefully it all gets put behind him. You know, but I think it's still a you know it's an okay situation there. Yeah, and then he also has been through some character issues during college. Yes, yes, he know, has. Including he got suspended for seven games last season while he was at Ole Miss. An investigation that found him he was receiving improper benefits, you know, including three loans of vehicles, a four-month interest-free loan of 3000 for a down payment on a car, and he had 
a free plane ticket bought by brought uh bought by a uh friend mm. yeah, yeah. That, that sounds a little a little sticky that excuse me a little sticky there you know yeah <laughs> sorry okay. the sorry. wire sorry. but um no it's it's interesting for sure you know um i hope you know this time next year we all forget about it i mean it's gonna be hard to forget that but i hope at the end of the day it's something that's not um gonna be held over his head for a while well do you think he's gonna make an impact for the dolphins right away i think he's gonna be a, a i do i gonna think he's impact. gonna start this year and i think he's gonna play well i really do so who else do you think from this year's draft is going to be a impact player next season? Um, let's see. So I think Ezekiel Elliott's going to be yeah, a, a, a rookie impact kind of guy. I think he's going to step in. He's going to be a starter. I think from day one, I think he'll upseat Darren McFadden and Alfred Morris, and I think that he's going to play well. I really do. Um, I think Ramsey is going to play well. I think he's going to start uh, day one over there in Jacksonville. I think he's going to play well, especially within a division where you have Andrew Luck and then. You know, $72 million man, Brock Osweiler over there, and, and Marcus Mariota. Um, those guys are highly touted, you know, with those teams. So you deserve to throw your best guy out there at corner, and I think that's what they have over there. I also think that Carl Joseph with the Raiders is going to have a very good year, good breakout year for him as, as a rookie at safety over there in Oakland. Okay, well, if we're talking about players that are going to make an impact right away, I do agree, Z.K. Elliott. Is going to make an impact next season. I think the Forrest Buckner is going to make an impact for the Niners. I'm not just, do. I'm not just, I'm not just saying that because I'm a Niners fan. But they need like, they need a pass rush, and I'm really excited to see him and Eric Armstead together. Yeah, I, I'm excited to see that chemistry with them. You know, I didn't pay attention to much in yeah. Oregon, so I can't really speak to it. But I do know that they, you know, enough to further both to go in the first round must mean that maybe together they play pretty well. And, of course, I got Jared Goff making an impact right away for the Rams. Okay. Um, I do think, yeah, I think he'll start from day one. He's supposed to be the starter. The goal is to have him start day, uh, game one is what Jeff Fisher said. And, yeah, I think the kid has the intangibles to go out there and, and, and start and, and do well, hopefully. So you he's going to start. Do you have a favorite for Offensive Rookie of the Year? Favorite for Offensive Rookie of the Year? Yeah, who's your favorite? Ezekiel Elliott. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Is it, yeah. It's, Agreed. There's no doubt. Ezekiel Elliott, like. If he is not offensive rookie of the year, then someone really has to. Or he got hurt. He okay. He's going to get. He, he's either going to get hurt, or someone really outperforms him. Really outperforms him. <laughs> yeah. Golf. Like, golf. Okay. Hun- Henry. Henry. I don't. He's not going to start. Henry. No. no he's not going to start. He could, he's going to be. He's going to make an impact. Tally, like, 10 no, no, he's going. <laughs> yeah, that is true. He's gonna take a lot of touchdowns away from Demarco Murray. Probably, yeah. yeah. That's, that's for your fantasy, fantasy yeah, guys out there. Yeah, we're helping you guys out okay. here. Yeah, Hop okay. on our news because it's okay. it's important. <laughs> Who are some guys you think might underperform as rookies this year? Maybe won't live up to the bill of a first round pick, second round pick, so on and so forth. Maybe looking at all these names here. I can give you a couple while you look. Oh, yeah, 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 give me I a couple. I think Laquan Treadwell might take a couple years to get going there in Minnesota. He had some issues with uh, catching uh, last year there, like the last couple years there. Uh, and I don't know. I just think – I don't think he's going to step in from, you know, the get-go and just, you know, be catching touchdowns all over the field. And I also think that – Buckner might struggle a little bit at first. Oh, why you gotta do that? I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just telling you how I feel. What about you? You got some? Uh, I'll go from the uh, second round. Okay. Who you got? You see, that's gonna underperform. Yeah, somebody that might not live up to the bill of a first, second round pick. Maybe uh, if it, it's gonna be anybody, it'll probably be Miles Jack. Okay. Uh, yeah, re- it's okay. because of the uh, knee injury that he has. Uh, he might not even. He might not even play. True. He, he's not going to be a full healthy. True. I don't. Th- if he if he's not healthy enough to play, I think they should just honestly just hold him out for a year. Jalen okay. Smith might not even play a year. He, I, but he, it's it's looking like he's going to take a year yeah. off. Maybe um, maybe Reggie Ragland. No, maybe Ragland. Maybe a little bit. I can see him. Okay. And uh, speaking of Ragland, there and a couple of other linebackers you're noting there. Uh, who do you have as a possible favorite for defensive rookie of the year? Oh, I got Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got a little bit of an underrated pick. Who? Carl Joseph. Okay, I could I could see that. I okay. could see him stepping I, I in there in that. Oakland and playing that yeah. ball hawk role there opposite Reggie Nelson. 
and a couple of solid corners. Hopefully they, they keep building in their secondary yeah. there for Raider fans to finally have something in the last couple of years to get into the playoffs. I can see that. It's Who been since O two since they've yeah. been there to the loss to the Buccaneers in the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, when they got it seems like a yeah. long time ago, that, right? It Six, seems like seems like a lifetime ago. Fourteen years ago. Yeah, it was a lifetime. Yeah, that's that's some kids' lives. <laughs> yeah, literally. You know what I mean? Some that's kid was born that day. <laughs> that, yeah, I bet you a lot of kids were born that day. <laughs> you know. Yeah, especially in Tampa Bay. Okay, but we won't get to that. Well, we're born on the day of the Super Bowl. That is the whatever. day after. You know, I don't know. Oh, just stop. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. All right, go on. But um, no, there's definitely that's definitely somebody I can see. Um, yeah, um, Joseph, and yes, the obvious choice of of um, Ramsey. I also think that somebody up there could be William Jackson the third if he produces well. I also think that a dark horse could be Kem Diche. Kem Diche. Yeah. Kem Diche. Yep. Kem Diche. Kem Diche. He has probably the best not name in the draft. Che. Che. Not not soft. Che. Che. Okay. Not this Che. <laughs> that is a good name. Be- eh? Fetty has a good one. I still think that Efeti. Moritz Bollinger has the best name. Momo. It's a, it's <laughs> He's got the best it's name a, It's in the a draft. shame that uh, there's not 1738 selections. No, Because German Just Efeti <laughs> stop, 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 got stop, selected no. 1738. Stop that. Fetty. That. You know, okay. back in the day, there used to be um, a lot. There used to be 20 rounds in the draft at one point. There was yeah. 10. There was 12. Um, back in the day, there was 12. And Mike Mayock, the... Famous and uh, you know draft analyst was drafted in the tenth round by the Steelers. Man, imagine if the round. Imagine if the, the draft, draft would still, still be going. Yeah, it'd be still going. Yeah, yeah. And w- can you imagine sitting through all that, that kind of? Uh, I mean, shoot, maybe I would get drafted when they go that long. <laughs> you know, you never know. And like we were, so we were talking about that last dra- last our mock draft too. Is it like ten rounds, twelve rounds? Like that's insane. Like, gu- like guys after the fifth round aren't even guaranteed the roster spot. Like it. Typically, the first three guys are guaranteed usually to at least be on the roster their rookie year. Four, five, six, and seven, sometimes four, five, six, and seven. It's hardly it's hard to even guarantee that they'll be there, you know. And there's ten rounds, twelve rounds. Like, that's five people that you don't even, you know, that you're putting the time to, to draft. Who knows if they're even going to be there. You know, that's crazy. Yeah, and another uh, player I think that's going to make an impact. Okay. He wasn't. He don't worry. He was drafted in the second round, so we're not gonna. Okay. 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 Is a uh, the receiver that the Giants picked up in the second round, Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's gonna okay. be a really good player for that offense next season. His dad played in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, he's he's he seemed like one of the more pure receivers as opposed to Treadwell, who had the hand issues, and Fuller, who was more of a kind of a niche kind of guy, and Doxson. Um, he seemed more of of a kind of all around receiver to me. Yeah, uh, him and Corey Coleman are probably like my favorite receivers in this draft. Okay, I, yeah. I like I like Doxson a lot. I like Fuller. Doxson. I yeah. I do like Treadwell. I'm hoping that Treadwell can come in and produce because he seems like a that kind of receiver that if he pans out can kind of change your offense around. You know. Yeah, and then they're a potential playoff team already. So they, made, they made the playoffs last year. Yeah, they, you, know. you know they can make it for a second straight year in a tough division. They made the playoffs last year and they lost to the Niners. So. No, they didn't. Because the Niners didn't make the playoffs last year. No, I'm saying the Niners beat them. Oh, they know. They beat them. I thought you said they... They lost to the Niners in the, in the early no, they, season. They, and yeah, they're they, a team that still made the playoffs. They, they lo- yeah. How does that happen? Yeah. But then again, you lo- know, they, you're a lot different week one than you are week 16. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you what, though. That After that game, I was so hyped because Hyde was playing really well. And then I have him on my fantasy two, team. They went to the Steelers. He went to the Steelers, and then and they Pittsburgh came and back to Earth. And they came back to San Francisco with a hurt running back. And four turnovers. And that was and that was it for my fantasy team because I was relying on Hyde. I should have just traded him. Yeah, I, I won my fantasy league this year. I missed the playoffs. Ooh, that's too bad, man. I'm yeah, sorry to hear that. All right, let's move on. All right. <laughs> okay, and then uh, I want to talk about the quarterbacks in this uh, draft. You okay. Know? Who you think is going to, out of all the quarterbacks drafted, including Golf, Wentz, you know, Hackenberg, Cardale Jones, who do you think is gonna? Who do you think is okay besides Goff and Wentz? Who is the best quarterback drafted besides Goff, Goff and Wentz? In your opinion, probably Lynch, Paxton Lynch. I think is in a good spot. I think he can uh, hopefully come in and produce in a couple of years. And I also like the Cody Kessler pick from the Browns. Drafted him in the fourth round, I believe. He's gonna be a guy that can be a backup, but maybe even you know push that envelope and start. You know, and push to start. I also th- liked the um, 
Not because I'm a fan of the player. I also liked the Connor Cook pick by the Raiders there in the round, round three. Purely because it's somebody who'd come in, he's a young guy who can back up and at the very least have him build some, you know, some stats up and trade him, man, get some picks back. You know, they have a young guy there. They don't need two young guys to be there. Especially Connor Cook looks like a guy who's on the on the brink of a you know a career backup starter kind of guy. So yeah, uh, that was the pick I didn't really like. I thought that was really questionable. Yeah, for the Raiders, especially like in the fourth round, they really don't need him. They don't, and they traded up to get him too. But I think hopefully and ultimately it's to trade him, get some picks back, you know, get some value for what you spent on him, you know. Quarterbacks that I really liked in the draft is Doc Prescott and Cardell Jones. You like Dak? Um, yeah, I, I like was Dak. I'm not a fan of of, of Cardell at the moment. Not as I mean as a person, I'm sure he's fine. As a quarterback, he has inconsistent um, you know motion with his throws. He has la- limited footwork for a big guy. He's very nimble, but he lacks pocket mobility. He's more of a out and run kind of guy, you know. Um, he's not the kind of guy that's gonna shift up back and forth in the pocket and then step up. He'll step up and run, you know. Um, I think he just lacked a lot of technique and a lot of fundamentals in his throwing motion. So not h- high on him hugely. Dak, um, interested to see what he does, getting drafted by the Cowboys there, um, seeing you know, s- to see if he comes in, becomes a guy that could possibly take over for Romo eventually. You know, he's, a, he's got all the intangibles. He's a big guy. He's fast. He can run the ball. He's got a rocket arm. So uh, I do like that pick. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one there. I like the Cardell Jones pick because they already have two quarterbacks on there on the roster. Mm. He doesn't have to play right away, Cardell Jones. I still think Tyrod Taylor is going to be the starter. You see, it's tricky. They have re- so far refused to extend um, Tyrod Taylor's contract. Mm-hmm. EJ Manuel is a, is a free agent after next year. And then you have Cardell Jones. Yeah, Those I like aren't it. very proven guys. There's not a very proven quarterback room. What happens if Tyrod gets hurt and it's EJ and Cardell? You know, that's not very proven. That's it, it's a lot in the air for me. You know what I mean? I thought he could have went somewhere. Maybe there was somebody he could learn behind a little bit more. See if he is such a work in progress. It looks like, and I don't see that with the Bills. You know. Well, I do. <laughs> and, 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 yeah, that's fine. You yeah. know what I mean? Everybody's entitled to their opinion and everything. And, and, of course, none of us know the, the right answer. We'll have to see when time comes. You know well, what I mean? I, um, I like it for the future. I don't like it, like, right away. Yeah, like, right no, away, he's he, not going to be the future. Good, no. But the future, I like it. Yeah, the guy in the front office thinks he could be a potential starter one day. And I'm not ever going to, you know, rule that out. I don't know. You know, maybe one day he can get there. You know, I think he's going to have some work to do, though. Okay, well, we got to talk about golf and wins. Okay. You know, we haven't talked about these quarterbacks. We actually haven't discussed them that much. Not be really, yeah. since it was such a yeah. predetermined thing that they're going to go one two. I think it's time to discuss what I think it's time to discuss what kind of NFL careers that they might potentially have. Okay. Um, me personally, I think golf is going to make the impact right away next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wentz might take a little bit more time to develop. Um, I don't see him starting next year unless no. unless Bradford gets traded or hurt. Or her, yeah. Which is both. It, it's possible. Tra- I think he, hurt's he, more likely than traded. I think, I think he's going to get hurt and then get traded. I'm kidding. Yeah. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Nobody I mean, it it might. It might. Yeah. Unless you're the Bills because all you have is Cardinal Jones. Hey, Cardinal Jones is the – he's my boy, okay? Okay. Uh, so, and Miles Jack. <laughs> if Miles Jack can play quarterback and be in the game. End story. Um, no, I think – I agree with you. Goff's going to be make the bigger impact. impact. Um, what I thought, though, kind of early on is – um, you know, maybe it's going to be Goff that makes the early impact, but maybe it's going to be Wentz that's the better, you know, prospect overall. You know, yeah, he's got he's got the the skills. He looks like a guy that can really flourish and do a good passer, and hopefully, sitting uh, maybe a season or two behind Bradford will really give him what he needs to kind of be that. You know, what do you think? I think about. Goff, I think he's in a really good situation. Uh, Wentz okay. is, he's in a very, I think about, he's kind of in a winnable division. Mm-hmm. So they're both in really good spots. But I just don't, I don't see the Eagles competing. I don't see them winning the NFC East as of right now. I think that Cowboys are going to win just because based on their, what they did in the draft. Okay. Yeah. So Goff, I think he's, he's also, he's in a tough division, but he's also on a tough team. It's true. Yeah, and I, I actually, I'm actually excited to see what the Rams are going to do this year. Yeah, I'm, exci- I, I li- I'm excited to see him play in another stadium. 
Yeah, that's the same thing with Minnesota yeah, when yeah. she the uh, Minnesota University is killed. Yeah, so you know he uh, go go yeah Gope is gonna go Hollywood. I swear yeah. if he if he plays really well, he's gonna own that town. Kobe Bryant is not there anymore. You think? You, who, we know, no, he Blake might, Griffin, he, no he Chris might, Paul. He might win. He he might if he plays really well. Okay. Yeah. He's gonna be the new face of the L.A. Yeah. Rams. Or the face of L.A. Potentially. Need to go back to those yellow and blue uniforms and not the. I want them to. I want them to. Why? Why didn't they go to the back to those? Because they're ugly. Dude, they're sick. Uh, I mean, I like them. Uh, they're better than those color rush jerseys they had. Oh yeah! Like oh my bottles. gosh! Oh my god! Don't even get me started on color rush jerseys, man. Just, uh, oh, I hate those. They did them again this year. Why? <laughs> it's the Thursday. I think the Steelers. I, are I, I know. I understand that, but they they just they. Do you see the Christmas game between the? No, it wasn't Christmas game, but it was a, a game between. Y- people call it Christmas because it was yeah, the Bills it was and the Bills and, and, the, Bills and the, the Jets. Jets. Yeah, they're doing that again this year, except for they're not going to both be solid colors. One okay. team's going to be white. Oh, thank, thank, goodness. thank goodness. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Okay. Not white that really more. hurt my eyes. Yeah, no, uh, my buddy's colorblind, and he said he, he couldn't tell the difference. Yeah, that was a really huge problem, actually. Yeah, that's why I had. That's why I kind of had a problem with it. Yeah, yeah. I think I think they're gonna focus more on one team wearing full on white, and the other one, like, so say the Bills were the away team, they were all white, and then the Jets wore those green uniforms. Like the Steelers have um, color rush this game game this year, and either yeah. their jerseys gonna be all black. Or they're going to be all white, which is a variation of what they they wore an all white jersey on the road in the seventies in the mid seventies, and um, it'll be dependent on what the Colts decide to do. So either they'll wear all white or they'll wear all of that blue they have. I think the Niners have a color rush game too. I'm not sure. They can just wear those black jerseys. Yeah, yeah, why? Yeah, they should. Even though that's not you know. I think they should wear either all gold. I would love to see all gold. The the (laughs) Jaguars did all gold last year and didn't look too bad. Yeah. You know what Niners jerseys I miss is I miss those um, early mid two thousands jerseys. Those dark. The the, the burgundy ones. I like those. Yeah, I kind of did too. Yeah, I really did. I like the ones they have now, kind of back to the eighties. You know, better than those. um, The 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 ninety ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah, That cherry red. But um, yeah, those, uh, I, yeah, I wasn't too a fan of those. Those, like, those draft I was like, Alex where Smith are those? Overall jerseys. Yeah, I was like, where are those? No, okay. no, no. <laughs> no. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I do, I do miss weird. those. I do, yeah. So it's just weird. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Back to business. <laughs> Back to business. Okay, uh, we were talking about Cardo Jones earlier, uh-huh. uh, Ohio State quarterback. Okay. But he was one of twelve players from Ohio State to get drafted yeah. this year, and then they really ruled the draft this year very early. Also. Yeah. List them off for me. Okay. Well, number one. Give me the first round guys. Uh, that's what I'm doing. All number right. Give me the first round guys. I am. Okay. I ha- okay. Give me the first round guys. Let me get to <laughs> it, man. Okay. You you know what? Keep going. We got like eight more minutes of this. <laughs> <laughs> no, good. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, going. Okay. In the first round, Joey Bosa. I said Joey Bosa because I remember it. I remember I said his name wrong in the last show. So Joey Cheer. Bosa. I got yeah. you, Joey. Going number three to the Chargers. Okay. And then, and then Ezekiel going number four. So, Ohio State players going back to back. Then all the and then uh, number ten Eli Apple goes to the Giants. And then sixteen Tyler Decker. Taylor. Taylor again. Taylor Decker. Taylor Decker. Taylor Gang. Taylor yeah. Gang. Taylor Gang. Taylor Gang. Yeah. Taylor Gang. Okay. And then we got Darren Lee going at twenty, so that's all the first round guys. Okay, five guys in the first round. That's pretty good. That's pretty good for a defense. Um, pr- heavy. I mean, they have one offensive player there, two offensive players there, three offensive players there. Now you keep counting. <laughs> uh, they have. I mean, that's good for a team in general. They have a lot of defensive players. I don't know why I said defense initially, but offense and defense is pretty even, honestly. Yeah. This draft. Um, but a lot. I mean, that's a lot for one school. Uh, go ahead and give me the. The second round. Two round? second rounders. <laughs> the two second rounders. Okay. They had the most in the first round. Yeah, they did. Five in the first. Okay, round. Michael Thomas goes to forty-seven okay. to the to the Saints. Then we got Von Bell going sixty-one. All right. He also went to the Saints. Yeah, they actually. got both. Yeah, we got, yeah, yeah they got two. Oh, okay, and then give me the threes. Yeah, and the then three threes. Three threes, huh? Yeah. Okay, all right. And. I'm saying this right, Adolphus Washington. Yeah, nailed it. Okay. Adolphus right. Washington. Adolphus yeah. Washington. That's a that's a unique name. That's a great name. I like that. Adolphus. Imagine if that name Adolphus with Nanishke. Adolphus Nanishke. Nanishke. Oh my gosh. I like how I still okay. know who you're talking about. Though. I know. Okay. Okay. By the end of the season, I will uh, I will pronounce his name correctly. I we'll guarantee you. Okay. He wants to make a bet. He want to make a bet. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. All right, who we got? Okay, uh, 82. We got Nick Vanett, a tight end, a big tight end, going yeah, to the Seahawks. Yeah, Nick Vanett's a pretty big dude. Yeah, he's 
think he's at, is it 6566? Six, five, six, six? I'll say 6'5". Six, 6'5", five. Six, five? Yeah. like 250 plus. Something like that, big tight end. 250 yeah. plus. Then we got Braxton Miller going to the Texans. That's at a steal. Braxton 85 Miller, that's Braxton Miller, yeah. there. Then we got. The two fourths. The two fourths. The two fourths. Okay. <laughs> Joshua Perry going <laughs> overall uh, 102 to the Chargers. Okay. And then and Cardo Jones, the finally. last the last and final player. Cardo Jones. Cardo Jones going over 134 to the Buffalo Bills. That's quite a draft for one team. Yeah. It's not the best overall ever, but it's the f- it's a record for the n- for the most in a single one two round, I think, for the first two rounds. Is it? First two rounds? So. Yeah, first two rounds. Yeah, first two rounds. Yeah. Having what is that, seven guys going in the first two rounds, that's pretty good for one school. Uh, the fact that they have five guys going in the th- no, they have three going in the top ten. Yeah. They had four just shy of the top fifteen and five uh, yeah, five in the top twenty of the first round. That's pretty good. Wow. They could have had more. Wow. Okay, so out of any of these Ohio State guys, who you think is – okay, besides Ezekiel Elliott. Cause yeah, he's we already talked obvious, about he's it. We've talked about him too many times already. Um, so besides Ezekiel besides Elliott – Besides the first round pretty much. Or, okay, besides Ezekiel Elliott, who do you think is going to make an uh, impact next season out of this Ohio State group? I think it's Joey Bosa or possibly Eli, Eli Apple. I like Von Bell and um, Braxton Miller also. I like Von Bell. Yeah, Von Bell. Um, Those would be some good picks. Braxton Miller, I can – he he can be a little bit hybrid player there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, he's yeah. a definitely – that's a great weapon to have on the team. Yeah. I yeah. think I think he'll uh, add a nice wrinkle there for Osweiler. Yeah, okay. And then uh, I can see Michael Thomas making an impact too because that team is really yeah, needs maybe. receivers. As the year comes on, yeah. But uh, those are pretty much – that's all we got for you guys today. We have another episode that we're going to record again probably this time – I want to say t- Wednesday – no, Thursday. Thursday. I forgot yeah, you're not yeah. here Wednesday. So Thursday, we have another show coming at you with even more news from this week as we get farther away from that draft and f- closer to rookie mini camps. So we'd like to thank you guys again for listening to the Golden State Media Pro- Concept Football Podcast. Uh, you can visit us on iTunes for new episodes each week. You can also find us at the GMs, G- I'm sorry, gsmcpodcast.com. You can find us on Twitter at gsmc underscore football and Facebook at Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. As always, I'm Alex. And I'm Jeremiah. And thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. Catch you cats on the flip-flop. Catch you on the flippity-flip. Oh, my God. (laughs) Bye, guys. (laughs) 